Okay, so doing doing these simple but accurate shapes is fairly easy to understand when you've got an object like an animal or a still life or, or anything like that. But the same principle applies, but maybe it's less obvious um, with other subjects. So like landscapes, seascapes, city, street, street scenes, that sort of thing. But this is a nice easy one to understand because we've got a simple shape there. And we've got a simple shape there. Ignoring the people, we've got a simple shape there and there. So we can still operate this system of simple but accurate shapes. And then I'm going to look at how you break those down into further, smaller, simple but accurate shapes. So if we, we take this one, this shape here first. And I'm ignoring all the perspective, well, to some extent, I'm ignoring all the perspective within the shape. But that little line there that does that sort of angle that's where the shape becomes accurate, but it's going to be dead simple. That line there is not as long as that line there. And then it comes down at an angle like that, and then kind of comes down there. That bit there is the same length as that bit there, just as an example. So that tells me I've got that right to about there, and that right to about there. And then from the point of the bottom of that down to there, is at an angle like that. So that's taking something that's incredibly complex, like i.e. this building here with all of its little bits in it and all the different perspectives and things, and it's breaking it down into a very simple overall shape. And like I said, it doesn't really matter how you see the shapes, it's whatever works for you. But if I blur my eyes, that becomes a very similar tone, so that's an easy shape for me to understand. If we take this distance, it just, it just pops out a little bit more there, again, to me, to my eye. I'm treating the shape behind it as going to be a separate shape, and I'm going to get to that in a sec. But quite often starting with the biggest shapes first, the easiest to understand shapes helps me. So almost imagining there's a line across. And we jump from there to this big shape here. And you might stick on that as a smaller shape later. So I'd just be looking at that shape there. And again, if I blur my eyes, it's an area of not dissimilar tone. And it comes to, so if we make that the top of the, the drawing, that gap there, this is what makes it an accurate shape, even though it's simple. That gap there appears to be roughly the same width as that. So. Yeah, it depends how accurate you want to be. I'm completely happy with that level of accuracy. And then if I blur my eyes, it is basically just a big rectangle that comes to maybe, let's make it come to about there. So at no point am I even remotely thinking about drawing a street scene. From that point there, we have a sort of an angle that does that ever so slightly. point a little bit lower and that's it that's that simple shape there's loads of different things going on there there's little bits of sky peeking through there's signs and all that sort of stuff but this is how to look at it initially and like I said if you're start if you're painting you can do it like this I would tend to paint this by just blocking all of that in a, a simple tone so we come back to this idea of simplicity and it's all kind of one tone that's sort of in shadow. This is all one tone. So dead simple, simple shape, but an accurate shape. You've seen me working out how to make the shape accurate. There we go. So it's very simply that street scene. This shape here that is the the, the ground or the yeah the ground, the street, I've got by just doing those two. The negative shape of the sky will sort itself out. The only other shape I need to worry about is this shape here, which is the tower in the background. And I'm going to try and make that as simple as possible, but accurate. So this point of the tower doesn't go any higher than that. So we're relating these shapes in and how they relate proportionally. If I draw a line up from this little point here, which is that point there, I've not quite got it steep enough. I draw a line up, I get pretty much up through the middle of the tower, so that tells me where the, the tower itself is. Maybe I come up just up the side of it, of that bit, and we just treat it as a shape. 
simple shapes it's off to one side proportionally that is shorter than I've got it so we want these shapes to be accurate still then that kind of comes around here comes down there and now we're kind of into all of that just being one shape and it should come down the side here yeah and we could just join it into the distant area as well so there we go I've taken taken that shape and made it very simple took a little bit more working out than these shapes but let's let's do that it's not as dark on the whole as that shape there so that's it we've got one two three big shapes that I really focused my attention on and as a result that kind of incidentally gave me these shapes as well and that's how I start the majority of my paintings with these big simple shapes with thin paint unless it's watercolor it might be slightly different but still thinking about the subject in these terms how do we go a stage further we start to think about tone a little bit more this tone is darker than that tone so that makes sense the white of the sky, it's not quite white, but it is very light, and it's certainly much lighter than even that there. So I'll leave that as just a very, very light tone. And then we come back into this simple but accurate shape, and we look for smaller shapes within it. So for example, there's a smaller shape here that does something kind of like that, and on the whole it's a little bit darker. There's another small shape here, and on the whole it's a little bit darker, but we still want simple but accurate shapes. There's another shape here, a little rectangle that's darker. Funny little abstract shape there that's darker. Another shape there that's darker, and then as we come down, all of this area generally is much, much darker down at the bottom. So again, Some of those lines will be sharp, other ones will be a little bit softer. And you can just go on and on, you can then say well within this shape there's a slightly darker shape and a slightly darker shape, like how far do you go with it, is there another tone and shape within that one? But you can see as long as that all remains in shadow and we're not doing too bad, within this shape there's some areas, there's a smaller shape that's slightly slightly darker. There's also shapes that are slightly lighter but I'd have to get a rubber out and you know pull the charcoal back out again but that's that's not it for this exercise that's a different one. Now we come into here there's a shape here which lines up with about with about this area here and it's a dark rectangle so again it's just a shape within an existing shape within that dark rectangle there's an even darker rectangle about there. So you just go on and on. Now we could start to think about the perspective a little bit more. Start hanging some of these smaller shapes off the bigger shapes. Even start to do a little bit of drawing. But all within this initial big shape. And those big shapes always remain underpinning everything. And you go on and on, just breaking it up into smaller and smaller shapes still being accurate with the shapes, still being simple with the shapes and starting to think about what tone they are. And then this in here, you know, there's a little bit of shadow there and even the people. So let's, I don't want to get caught up in painting people, but even the people, we can look at them as abstract shapes. So this guy here, for example, we could start with a rectangle. His body is also a rectangle. His legs kind of are a bit more kind of freestyle but they're still he's still really just a shape like that even the shadow is just a shape and then we refine that shape like we chip little bits off it we add things to it but we start with the biggest shape first and you can see how quickly we get our scene so um, when you're painting you just go smaller and smaller and more refined with your shapes I tend to stop at quite a loose point but it's really up to you what you do and then if this was a proper painting, all of your little details would come at the end over the top of your big shapes. That sort of a thing. So that's it, guys. Simple but accurate shapes. Almost forget, if not entirely forget, what it is that you're painting and just try and break them down into these simple but accurate shapes. Simple 
in terms of them maybe just being an outline like this one or not having too much detail or any detail at all, no tonal variation initially. All of these things make it simple, but they need to be accurate. So we have to check like, what is that distance relative to that distance? What exactly is that angle there and this angle here? How far is that distance relative to that distance? All of these things that make them accurate and make them very specifically this subject and not just accidentally something else. Um, so yeah, a lot of it is down to observation. So hopefully that makes sense guys, as always. I hope you enjoyed it and you got something out of it and I shall leave it there. Um, those simple but accurate shapes will get you far further in your painting and your drawing than any amount of detail or any fancy techniques and stuff like that. If you don't have these simple shapes underpinning that stuff, um, they, they're not particularly useful. Like there's a place for them, but it's on top of all of these simple shapes. So this video is an example of the kind of 10 minute, 15 minute pro tips videos that I offer on Patreon. I want to continue to do loads of stuff on YouTube because it's a great platform and I want to share as much as I can for free. But if you hop over to Patreon, your subscriptions over there, they allow me um, and gift me a little bit more time to get deeper into stuff. Um, and I kind of build on all of these principles. There's loads of different tiers from $1 up to over $100. Um, but the one to ten dollar tiers are all aimed at teaching and for me I think they do represent good value for money obviously I'd say that um, but every month at the ten dollar tier you get um, big long tutorials about different aspects of painting and drawing last time or last month it was color mixing loads of color theory before that it was getting into tone at the lower tiers there's time lapses some exclusive to patreon um, and there's also commentated time lapses which are exclusive to Patreon. The pro tips, these ones are at a $5 tier along with real time fully narrated paintings. And you can also support the podcast which I have which is Creative Perspectives. I'll put all of these links down below um, in the details. And um, as always guys, don't forget to subscribe if you like this because there's gonna be loads more. Comments and thumbs up, they really help me out too. And until next time guys, happy painting. And